In the previous tutorial, we downloaded and set up GlassFish 4 in our development environment. In this tutorial, we're going to configure Eclipse and create our first web application. First of all, make sure you have the latest version of Eclipse, which is Eclipse Kepler. I have put the download link in the blog post. So make sure you get the latest version and install it. So once you have Eclipse running, uh, setting up GlassFish in Eclipse is pretty much the same as any other uh, application server. So what we do is first go to the servers tab. So I go to the window, show view and uh, servers. So here it tells me that there are no servers available. So I click on this to create a new server. So the idea here is to have a GlassFish server configured in the servers tab so that we can actually deploy our application directly from Eclipse. If you've seen the previous Tomcat tutorials, this is very similar to that. So basically we're trying to set up the GlassFish server over here. But if you notice, you don't have the GlassFish server type listed by default. That's because all these things that you see here are server adapters. So you know that Eclipse is basically, uh, you know, built upon the concept of plugins. So every feature apart from the core runtime is all built using plugins that you can add to Eclipse. So the same way you need to set up the GlassFish server adapter, which is actually a plugin. So since you don't see that here, you click on this link here, which says download additional server adapters. So it's gonna look at all the available server adapters and show us the list. And here you see GlassFish tools. So GlassFish tools comes with the GlassFish server adapter that lets us configure the server in Eclipse. So I click on that and hit next. I accept the license agreement and finish. So support for GlassFish tools will now be downloaded and installed, very good. So I'll need to restart Eclipse for the changes to take effect. So I restart it now. And I'm back to the workbench. Now it still says no servers are available. That's because we have installed the adapter, but we haven't created a server yet. So click on it again. And this time you see you have the GlassFish entry. So ideally you should have a GlassFish 4.0 entry available here. So you click on that, hit next. Now it asks me for the GlassFish server directory, which is the same directory in which we installed GlassFish in our previous tutorial. So I browse to that directory, I hit browse, go to Java, GlassFish 4. And here you see the GlassFish 4 directory has a whole lot, but there is one folder called GlassFish inside. So that's the main application server directory. There are a whole lot of other stuff that comes with GlassFish. We're gonna take a look at that later. But it is GlassFish4 slash GlassFish. And I hit okay. Now it says it's found GlassFish server four. And um, I can also choose the JRE. I'm gonna choose the JDK 1.7, which has been installed in my machine and hit next. Now it asks for the domain directory. The domain directory is basically the directory where the domain is set up. So like we've seen, there is a domain one that's set up by default and that's gonna be the domain that I'll choose. So the administrator ID is admin and I believe the password is blank by default. So I'm gonna choose, I'm not gonna enter any password here. And uh, there is a checkbox here which says preserve sessions across redeployment. What's uh, really cool about this is, say you have a session that's built up by your application when you're testing it and you wanna redeploy the application again, you can actually redeploy it and still maintain the session across redeployments, which is really handy when we are developing. So I'm gonna check this. And uh, I don't have any applications here, so I'll just click finish. So I have GlassFish set up in my Eclipse. So I can right click here and uh, hit start and it should start GlassFish. This is, this is basically the same as um, the ace admin command that we've seen earlier, but we're gonna do it uh, in Eclipse itself. So once the server is started up, I can right click here, go to the GlassFish menu and view admin console. So this is basically the same as opening the browser and typing in this address, localhost colon 4848, which is the admin console URL, which we already seen basically loads the same thing up in Eclipse. So it's kind of, you know, you get an integrated workflow. You don't have to juggle between programs. You can do everything in Eclipse. So we see that the GlassFish server is up and running. 
Okay, so now that we have Glassfish set up in Eclipse, we can actually start writing our own web service. Okay, so the goal here is to create a web service project, right? A JAX WS web service project. So when you right click here and say new project, depending on your setup, depending on the plugins that you have, you might see an option for new JAX WS web service project. So don't go for that one because if you go for that, Eclipse provides you a template for web services, which has a lot of things, which is already there. Uh, we don't wanna do that. We wanna learn how to write it on our own. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go for a dynamic web project, right? It's a simple web application. So it's not a web service yet, it's just a web application. So I'm gonna call this project as TestMart. So I'm creating uh, an online e-commerce application, right? A simple bare bones online e-commerce application. And uh, I'm gonna have uh, logic to get product categories and products in those categories. And we're gonna create a web service out of it, which does the same thing, but through JAX WS. So I'm gonna choose it. Uh, by default, it's Classfish 4 as the target runtime, and I hit finish. So I've created this simple web application called TestMart. You might see this JAX WS web services entry over here, but this is, this is blank. It does not have any web services. We are not gonna use this. We're gonna create the web service ourselves. So the web content does not have any web pages. So I'm gonna create a simple JSP page. New file.jsp is fine. So I'm gonna create a web page that says, welcome to test smart, right? It's just for testing so that we can find out if the application is deployed fine. It'll be handy later. So I'm just gonna run as and run on server. Classfish will be the default for this project and I hit finish. So there you go. The application has been deployed on Glassfish and it is working fine. Okay, so now let's start writing the logic. So I'm gonna create a new Java bean, right? It's gonna be a, a simple web service. We're not gonna have a database and all that. It's just for testing. So I'm gonna create a new class .java brains, and I'm gonna call this class as product catalog. Okay, so I'm gonna write a test method here, which returns information about the catalog, right? And then we're gonna see how to make a web service out of this. Okay, so the first method that I have in mind is to retrieve the product categories that are available in this test mart. So I'm gonna create a public method returns a list of product categories. Okay, I'm gonna import list. And I'm gonna have some simple uh, hard-coded categories over here. Something like this. I'm gonna create a categories as an array list and I'm gonna add three sample categories. I'm gonna add books, music, and uh, movies, right? I'm gonna return these three as a simple array list of string and save. So this is very simple. It's not really accessing anything from the database. It's just hard coded, but this should serve our purpose. So now this should work fine. I mean, there's nothing really to it. It's just a simple method. Now, the question is, how do I create a web service out of it? So my goal is to have a web service that has an operation called get product categories. And people can send SOAP requests to get product categories. And then this application will return a SOAP response with these categories, right? So we're gonna learn how to do that in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.